Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Hope everyone is doing well. Today's review is going to be about a backpack, specifically the Marin Dolphin Blue 40 liter three day assault bag. So with all the hype and buzz in the light fighter and prepared citizen community surrounding pack, sustainment, and the means of carrying gear around, uh, obviously inspired by uh, YouTube accounts like T-Rex Arms, Garant Thumb, uh, and as well as Instagram accounts like Redbeard Tactical, which I highly recommend you check out for a wealth of free information and knowledge uh, given to us at no cost. Uh, making us better prepared citizens, uh, increasing our capabilities in many ways, uh, I think that's really important to check those out and to give credit where it's due. Uh, but I thought it would be appropriate to review an undermentioned bag that deserves much more attention and consideration. Uh, it's no secret that obviously we love spending money on gear and comparing brand names, and of course all gear is useless without a baseline of fitness, training, practice, personal development, uh, testing your kit out. So uh, you obviously have to do that uh, in, after you've bought your uh, gear or whatever gear you have. It's not going to do any good for you if you're not training with it. Uh, but quality gear can enhance your capabilities and help, definitely help you accomplish your mission. So with that out of the way, let's get into the review. So there are a ton of bags uh, available for sale, uh, like everything. There is a spectrum of brands, quality, and their intended use. And a few like Mystery Ranch, Tactical Taylor, are definitely get a lot of traction on social media, a few other names as well that slipped in my mind, uh, and for good reason. But there are other reputable brands that deserve mention and may better fit your budget and your objective. So Marim Dolphin is a very well-respected nylon designer and manufacturer out of Israel. Uh, they've got experience in supplying and fulfilling contracts to the IDF and several other, other Israeli and foreign customers. Uh, they're in use with a lot of uh, search and rescue teams in Israel, uh, civilian users as well. And they're not the only brand of tactical nylon goods uh, out of Israel, but they are one of the oldest and they have come up with some pretty unique solutions and innovations. And you could check them out on their website uh, to see those kind of uh, the different developments and uh, kind of solutions they've had to carrying gear. Uh, they have a full line of gear from plate carriers to pouches to assault packs to full-size rucksacks and you'll see that this 40 liter blue bag is kind of the perfect in the middle bag it's not an assault small assault bag uh, it's not a multi-day mission uh, field pack uh, but i think it's very applicable to most people in most survival situations unless of course you are intended to ruck, intending intending to ruck with a large multi-day field pack the bag has been in production for a while i think it's criminally overlooked and i'm happy to do a deep detailed dive and bring it to light so getting Marum's products, or in general, any kind of defense or outdoors related product in Israel is kind of a logistical and customer service challenge. So Marum really kills you on their high shipping cost. So I reached out to an online tactical supply distributor called ZFI. And ZFI is based both, both in Israel and the United States. They have a main warehouse in Israel with product in stock and ready to ship. Uh, ZFI is also co-managed by the same team that runs other similar tactical web stores, such as One Huntsman and YRS Inc. So there's a lot of product overlap and corresponding customer support. They have a huge offering of accessories, parts, upgrades, and gear uh, for Marum Dolphin, Fab Defense, IMI, Meprolite, and other Israeli uh, products that are kind of hard to source directly from the manufacturer. They also have products from Vortex and other US-based brands you've probably heard of. And the prices are really competitive. If you create an account with them, I believe you get like uh, something like a 10% off discount. Uh, they often run sales on holidays, no other fees or tax. Uh, if your order is above 150 or 200, I'm not sure which one, you'll get free shipping, which is really nice, especially considering it's coming from uh, overseas sometimes. And with ZFI, you get very competitive pricing. The customer supports all in English. You have the ability to securely pay with PayPal or any kind of other major credit card, and you get quick shipping and delivery. And I just wanted to disclose that I was sent the bag to review. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video, this video, and uh, writing a blog post for them, uh, but I cover the shipping cost. There was no other financial relationship, there was no affiliate codes. Uh, ZFI did not tell me what to say or influence my opinion of this bag. There will be a link below to purchase the bag, but I'm not making any money on your purchase or your clicks. Okay, onto the bag. So, the purpose behind selecting this bag. It's easy to feel lost with so many options and voices competing for your attention. The most efficient and cost-saving way is to determine what situations you are preparing for, uh, kind of what exactly you want to have with you, like what gear you want uh, to survive and help accomplish your mission, how long you have to provide your own sustainment versus utilizing some kind of a supply line. So I consider myself somewhat fit, I stay physically active, but I'm also realistic. And I know right now I don't have the endurance to carry a 60 pound Alice style external frame rock for multiple days uh, in adverse environments. It's something I'm studying up on, I hope to do, but being on a limited budget, it's something I can't really prioritize spending on just yet. In my case, it's far better that I train with an internal frame bag that could carry everything I need for a full day of backpacking with the potential to survive and stay overnight if required. I also want the bag that would, uh, the bag I'm looking for would have to be built for a demanding customer in mind, someone like the military. Uh, it has to be able to take on tactical applications if needed, but it also has to look somewhat low-key, discreet, and 
absolute requirements for me. It has to be durable, comfortable, uh, compact, affordable. Obviously, it has to look cool. Uh, bonus points if there's some kind of customization to attach extra gear, uh, to run hydration. And in terms of size, 40, 40 liters is a good in the middle size. It enables you to carry a good amount of kit. Uh, you're not going to be overwhelmed by a large pack that sits above your head. It's not going to be uh, shifting on you. And the best approach is to uh, select gear that is multi-purpose. That kind of helps you slim down on the items and take it into the field, something, whatever you absolutely need. So Marum describes this as a three-day assault pack, pack uh, but that really depends on where you are getting your sustainment for all three days and what environment you find yourself in. If you're getting resupply daily, uh, you have an ultralight sleeping setup, you have your sleeping setup stashed in a vehicle, then yeah, probably this could carry everything you need for uh, three full days. However, for a typical citizen, I would venture to say this might be more of a full day mission. Think of like from sun up to sundown or from dawn, uh, and then 24 to 40, it could flex into a 24 to 48 hour emergency bag and fill that role very comfortably. So think of like a get home bag, a bug out bag, uh, until you reach a secondary destination, something that you could take with you into the field, it's life, it has everything you need, and you can uh, still survive out of it for uh, some time. So how are we gonna go through a constructive feedback? So rather than just list out a few things I would have liked to see without giving context, I've interspersed some feedback to the bag throughout the post, uh, throughout the video in this case, and that way you can evaluate the merits for yourself. And overall, I really tried to my hardest to nitpick and think of what I would do differently, mainly to give a comprehensive review, uh, kind of dispel any notions of bias and consider all angles. So the first question, does this bag make you look cool? And this is by far the most important question, and I can say it absolutely does. Uh, I can't say it gives off the same aesthetic as a Mystery Ranch or an Osprey bag, uh, but there's definitely something about sporting a lesser known, uh, but high quality product from the Mediterranean that just seems to make for kind of great conversation starters, uh, also demonstrates to everyone that you are not a, just a brand cult follower and you can recognize good kits from uh, faraway places and you can evaluate a bag on its own merits. Uh, as far as the color, which is the second most important question, uh, it's basically OD green. So it's olive drab green. The online pictures make it seem more brightly colored, but I can assure you guys uh, it's very matte. It's just a very standard shade of military OD. Uh, I do personally have an affinity for Ranger Green. I wish it was offered as such, but it's not a big deal. Um, and especially I like that it does look uh, benign. It doesn't look too overly uh, tactical. I think if you're going to practice backpacking with your stuff like you should, and you plan on sharing trails with non-preparedness people, uh, it's helpful to have a bag like this one that looks fairly muted from the outside. I mean, it blends in, but it doesn't uh, scream tactical. And especially if you intend to use your bag for kind of natural disaster or civil unrest, uh, it's good practice not to use a visibly kitted out bag that just raises intrigue, makes you look like a loot drop. So uh, I do like the overall setup and the uh, low profile nature of the bag on the outside. So let's talk about the specs of the balloon. So the balloon itself is made in Israel at Maram Dolphins Manufacturing Facility. The main fabric utilized that you see throughout the bag is Cordura, sorry, not Cordura, it's their Durabad fabric, which is a unique proprietary nylon that's intended to be lighter, stronger than Cordura. So it kind of looks like it, but it definitely feels different, feels rugged, uh, feels lighter and thinner and feels plenty strong. Other materials used are over here, we've got like a T-weave, uh, tweave style stretch material for the four sides of the beaver tail. And all outside facing zippers are coated with uh, polyurethane. They are water repellent. It's a very nice feature to see because you'll see this kind of, you'll see this included for sure on the uh, pricier upper tier backpacks like Mystery Ranch, uh, but a lot of the cheap budget ba backpacks uh, simply skip out on it. So it's a nice feature that Marum Dolphin included it on all the outside facing uh, zippers. So I'm unsure as to the uh, specific padding that's used um, on the uh, bag, but it contours well. It's kind of like a memory foam. Uh, makes it very comfortable to carry. Uh, kind of the more modern backpacks are using mesh style for airflow. Uh, I would have liked to see maybe that uh, to encourage airflow, but it's not a deal breaker. And you'll see over here, there is definitely room for airflow. Uh, it does move uh, and breathe very nicely. Uh, the back has a pair of aluminum rods uh, based on the product description, and they hold the stru structure up. Uh, so I guess, you know, you can't fold it, but it still flexes well with your uh, body. And to be honest, I can't even feel the uh, rods, but wherever they are, they're doing a good job at uh, maintaining the shape of the backpack. So that's perfect. The belt connector. So the belt connector over here on the back that we're going to go through, the D-rings, the buckles, they're all polymer, YKK, pretty much industry standard, uh, nicely done. The pack comes in at a weight of 1,700 grams, the waist belt 340, and the total is uh, 2,040 grams. The dimensions, the height uh, from my, when I measured it is 21 inches high, the width is 10.6 inches, and the depth is 9.1 inches, but that does not include the uh, beaver tail, which expands even further. And you guys will see uh, how much this bag really expands to hold a ton of stuff 
and that might be the name, the main uh, balloon, uh, short for balloon. This bag really balloons to hold a ton of stuff. The volume uh, equals, if you do the math on the uh, dimensions that I quoted to you, the volume equals 33 liters, and the listed volume is 40 liters, so I'm not sure how they got that. Uh, it could be perhaps they included the beaver tail expansion. Okay, so let's go through each of the features starting from the uh, front, work our way to the sides, the back, and then we'll go inside. So starting from the top, you've got an eyeglasses pocket. It is, the bottom half of it is uh, padded. Uh, it could be used to put any number of items, such as small camera equipment, pair of glasses, headlamp, binos. You also have an included clip, which is very thoughtfully placed, allowing you to keep your car keys from getting lost, or you can tether any number of uh, items. Next, you have the Maron Dolphin logo, a soft loop panel for patches and unit identifiers. Next, you have the uh, beaver tail, and the beaver tail is a great feature. Uh, it allows you to store any number of items like a helmet, a full-size helmet, and uh, you know your uh, ops core, whatever, any kind of helmet, a uh, pair of shoes, spare food, clothing, or any number of items or whatever your heart desires. Uh, you have the cinch strap here, and this hook is metal, and it allows for a precise fit. The tweave, oh, the tweave, t weave, whatever you call it, elastic, also expands as needed, and you can hold a really generous amount of stuff. And you have a full interior uh, pocket that is very uh, generous and can hold a lot of other items uh, pretty much without interfering with whatever you want to put in your beaver tail. Uh, the only uh, gripe I have is that the hook does have a tendency to slip out of this rubber retainer. I do wish they made it a little bit more point, like uh, sharper, a sharper, sharper angle. That way it wouldn't come out unintentionally. Uh, not a big deal. I can always put tape, wrap this end with tape so it doesn't uh, kind of slip out. It takes up the slack in the rubber retainer. And also on a, the exterior zippers, you have, like we've said, all the, uh, you have the polyurethane coating. You also have these very nice and ergonomic zipper pulls. They have some kind of uh, polymer uh, ergonomic handle, zipper pull handle. That makes for a very nice uh, zipper pull. Very easy uh, to operate. And I uh, do like that. Um, I do also especially appreciate that they have these tabs over here. That way when it's time to uh, open the bag or unzip the bag, uh, you have something to grab on. And it's very thoughtfully placed. You don't really notice it until it's time to use the bag. And then you're like, hey, that's a good point. Uh, I'm glad they included uh, that little feature. The zipper cord itself is also nice. Uh, it's not really paracord, but it feels plenty strong. So I have no issue with that as long as it lasts the life of the bag. Uh, again, not a problem at all. Makes for a very nice, like you're, not, you're not really fighting the zipper. Very easy to operate on all the uh, zippers. You also have uh, towards the way on the bottom, we're making our way towards the bottom. You have two lashing straps over here, which I absolutely love. These are really nice for strapping a minimalist sleeping pad, a coat, uh, walking sticks, or any number of items. I wouldn't want to uh, weigh it down with a bulky or heavy item though, uh, but lashing straps are usually overlooked. Uh, even on some of the more expensive bags, they are a super useful location to carry extra gear with you. And every strap also you'll notice is built in with these uh, little Velcro webbing keepers. So you can kind of fold up the uh, strap like this and take up any remaining uh, slack and cinch it down like that. That way you don't have to use uh, duct tape, electrical tape, uh, no need for that anymore. So every single zipper here comes, every single uh, webbing strap, I'm sorry, comes with that. A very thoughtful feature, then overlook it on any single uh, strap. So everything can cinch down nice and tight uh, before you go out into the field. You'll also notice that when the backpack is empty, as it is now, it really is super lightweight, extremely flat. Uh, it takes up minimal storage space and it's deceptively flat, uh, but the, the bag can greatly expand. Again, basically ballooning, ballooning out uh, as the name kind of implies. Uh, finally, you have a uh, flap over here. As you see, it folds very nicely. So kind of when there's nothing in here, it just uh, folds, takes up no nothing at all. Uh, but under this flap down here, you guys can see over here, this is where your rain cover is stored. And the cover is folded and it's actually tethered to the bag here. You can cinch it down tight as you need. Um, and it also is an OD uh, drab color, waterproof uh, material, kind of like the USGI poncho material, um, which we also, we have a poncho in here. We'll do a full gear layout of whatever I carry in the bag as well. And you can cinch it down uh, tight, it folds nicely, st stores out of the way. And you, uh, this is an excellent, another excellent feature of the Bulu. Uh, because you can basically waterproof your bag, uh, stow it away when you're not being when it's not being used. You don't have to buy a separate rain cover, and it's already tethered to your bag, and it comes in a very nondiscreet blended uh, color. A lot of the other pack covers out there are bright orange or red. Uh, kind of makes you stand out. Up to you if you want to be noticed or not. If you are kind of if you just want to have a normal looking uh, green bag, 
a uh, camel, whatever it is. It also makes sense though to have some kind of VS17 panel, a bright red uh, tote bag or something that you can uh, use as signaling uh, or you can just have on, while you're on a hike with your family, let them know where you are. That way you don't get uh, lost. Uh, but there is very, uh, very nicely done to have a, a rain cover already included. A lot of the other ones out there are either uh, kind of you have to buy from Amazon of dubious quality or uh, pay like 35, 40, about 50 bucks uh, to get the same uh, wrap pack cover as your uh, bag. Starting from the top, let's again, we'll work our way to the back. We've got a grab handle. It's just a single, simple piece of uh, nylon, uh, but it looks bar tacked and it's soon and strong. And so it does the job of carrying and transporting the bag. Uh, just don't expect to drag a buddy with it. Uh, that's not what it's there for anyway. Uh, that's what a roll of uh, tubular nylon is for. Recommend you check out Spirit of Systems and on YouTube and uh, County Coup Tactical on Instagram for and uh, Six Echo Systems as well on YouTube for multiple uses of uh, tubular nylon. Next are the ports for water. And you see it says H2O on the uh, bag right here. And you also have this buckle over here lining that you can open up and it goes into the inside uh, main compartment that you can use to carry any number of, uh, you can use to secure any number of communications equipment, antennas, radios, headphones, whatever, uh, headsets, whatever it is, uh, very nicely done as well, uh, showing you the kind of the tactical nature of the bag. Uh, it can flex and just be a regular civilian bag, outdoors bag, and also be used for a uh, number of other uh, mission essential items. Again, you have your, uh, you also have the straps over here with uh, keepers down here. These are your shoulder straps. You have a sternum strap over here with multiple different areas for where to attach the sternum strap. You have D-rings. You can also hook in uh, carabiners to hang off uh, gloves, items, whatever else you need. Uh, hook in a little chest pack. Uh, you have these load lifters here. They kind of adjust the pack and make the weight, shift the weight more towards the uh, to, towards your back and not kind of make the pack separate from you, going to all the weight uh, if you pack it properly. Uh, it's still the pack mate kind of wants to inch out away from you. Uh, so use these load lifters to bring the load uh, closer to your back. There's a nice amount of padding everywhere over here, here. There's still even padding over here. Uh, even if it doesn't look like it, there is padding over here. And it's a very comfortable padding. Feels like memory foam all over. Uh, the shape of the bag is also contour, if you guys can see. Uh, so it slopes down towards this quick, quick disconnect portion over here, like we'll talk about later. Which means that even though if the bag is against you, as it should be, it's not kind of compressing every inch on your back. Uh, there's kind of a gap between this, this area kind of is a gap uh, that doesn't necessarily touch your back and uh, ensures uh, some airflow. So it's nice that it's not pressing down. You have this memory foam to rely on and then some kind of airflow is going to happen over here. The straps themselves, uh, if you know the shoulder straps, if you notice, there is about a 1.5, an inch and a half a gap where there is no uh, padding. There's just the, uh, it's sewn here, but there's no padding. And the, it's not no big deal for me because I've never felt any kind of pressure point here. Um, I cannot even tell that the padding was not continuous until I physically went and started feeling it in, in, in terms of further review. So uh, not a big deal at all. Um, again, you have, again, offset somewhat, so maybe that it ensures uh, some kind of airflow. So let's move on to the torso height. So let's move on to the torso height. So the torso height over here, this may be an issue for some, uh, but the torso height is fixed, it's not adjustable. I'm around five foot 10 and I'm very happy with the fit. You probably also will be. Uh, but if you consider yourself on the uh, short side, um, then I would advise watching a YouTube video on how to measure yourself for a backpack and then just double check the dimensions. For most people, it should be a comfortable fit as there is a nice amount of adjustment available everywhere else. Finally, we have the proprietary quick disconnect feature on the uh, backpack and the hip belt or what Maron calls the tactical pivot point or TPP. From the outside, uh, when this is all clicked in, like I was showing you in the beginning of the video, you can't even tell that it's detachable. It just looks like every other uh, backpack. I will say that unlike some of the other backpacks, you can't exactly comfortably carry this farther than a short distance uh, without the hip belt. Uh, you do have this raised area that will hit you in the lumbar portion. It protects the uh, polymer housing over here, uh, the connection point. Uh, it is recessed, it is kind of padded. So again, a short distance across camp, not a big deal, uh, but if you're definitely, you do want to have this belt, this belt uh, on uh, for any type of uh, serious movement. Uh, part of me wishes that they made it more lower profile that we could carry without this because of, this bag is so cool and that it could flex to an ultralight uh, setup. Uh, you may not want to, you may not wish to have, or you may not be carrying enough gear to justify having a hip belt the entire time. Um, although this, this could become like your battle belt, uh, definitely improves your capability in that area. So 
Or part of me also wishes they had a little square padded portion here that I could just click in, not have to use the uh, uh, hip belt. Um, but at the same time, like most bags where the, the hip belt is not removable at all, you could just uh, click this in and just leave this unbuckled and walk around like that. Or move these ends to the uh, side, uh, click them in, that way it stays out of your way. So not a big deal. The hip belt uh, features a generous level of adjustment and accommodates a variety of sizes. Again, you have your keepers here, clicks in. You've got uh, molly all around the belt and that lets you uh, add any kind of uh, pouches. You can add mags, canteen pouches, GP pouches, dump pouches. Uh, credit for that idea goes to the Prepared Airmen's YouTube channel. I recommend you also check them out for a ton of field craft and survival information. And that all enhances the capabilities of the gear you can bring with you, uh, allows you to store additional material, carry items that you, you find uh, uh, with you into the field, uh, carry additional survival gear, uh, more water, more food, more sustainment, whatever it is. So although it looks unconventional the first time, the quick disconnect is useful for a ton of uh, reasons. Uh, first of all, it allows you to quickly swim out of the bag uh, on either dry or maritime environments, especially if the bag is heavy. Uh, it also allows you to get out using just one hand, so you can kind of uh, have this belt on, take the shoulder straps off, yank this, the bag separates, drops to the ground, you still retain a uh, battle belt. So in a tactical sense, if you end up in an emergency situation, you have to drop the bag, get yourself out of a kinetic situation, at least you retain a traditional battle belt. Again, like you could carry gear on this to enhance your capabilities. Pretty much everything that you would normally carry on your uh, battle belt, you can carry on here. And you can also keep your hip belt on the entire time, you know, walk around like that uh, on, on, at, when you're at your patrol base. And when it's time to move, just put on this backpack, click this in, and off you go. And you can also put on the bag normally, don and doff it with a traditional buckle, never use the quick disconnect and save it for emergencies. So totally your call. Your call. I do love how uh, you have that feature and option. Um, and the actual, the circular pivot mechanism is also really nice because it allows the bag to stay aligned with your body. It allows this to ride on your hips. And as your body flexes, the bag kind of also flexes with your, the, the upper half portion of your body, this flexes with your hips. So uh, it doesn't really, uh, prevents the hip from hip belt from like riding up on your hips or turning side to side or whatever uh, so everything stays nicely in place and doesn't slosh around um, like we discussed it's very easy to actuate it just clicks in automatically you pull this cord it comes off and uh, there's really no way for it to be disconnected accidentally because this cord is so low profile and you could just tuck it in out, out of sight out of mind but it's very easy to intuitively grab you know it's there with either hand you can grab it in a one-handed operation to get the bag off the TVP connector over here is also cross compatible with many of Marum's other products, such as other bags, plate carriers. So I do like uh, their approach. So continuing on to the sides, I just took off the hip belt just so everything fits in the frame. As I show you guys, uh, there is a generous amount of uh, room over here in the uh, for the ability to for the bag to flex open and uh, expand. Uh, over here, you have a hidden side zipper over here. If you guys can see, it runs the entire length of the side and reveals a very tall pocket that extends from this over here all the way down to here. Uh, you also have a tether, uh, a little uh, clip and hook over here to tether additional items, hang a uh, small little bladder. You can fit, probably fit a uh, water up to one liter over here. You can store shelter, water bottles, items, clothing. Uh, when it's not being used, it just folds in very nicely. You can barely tell it's there. And I also like that these, ex these uh, exterior pockets don't fill in this way, they fill in that way. So. When you're filling uh, your bag up, you're filling the side pockets. It doesn't stick into the interior. It doesn't steal uh, space away from your main compartment uh, just because you chose to utilize the side pockets. And that's a problem I've seen in other bags where they kind of take up the room in the middle. Uh, each side also features a compression strap over here. That way you can uh, use to cinch down the bag nice and tight. And there's a lot of webbing to work with. And you see the balloon's ability to expand really greatly and uh, hold in a ton of items. Same thing on the uh, other side over here, same same deal over here. You've got this entire pocket over here from stitch to stitch. Let's go into the inside. So if we undo the compression straps, the bag clamshells open and it reveals a very generous and roomy interior. We'll start from the main pocket over here. You've got a uh, Hydration pouch over here with an uh, elastic band to keep everything snug. You have a snap hook to suspend your bladder. There's also the Velcro lining that could be opened up uh, to allow you to run antennas, wires, any kind of other uh, communication equipment, 
and you have uh, pouches for you have the hydration lines over here, hydration uh, ports over here to run your line. On the bottom, you have a very generous and roomy interior. This is where your rain cover will be, but it expands even additional several inches, uh, additional several inches to fit in many more items as well. You have a little zipper over here, which I think just gives you access to the uh, frame inside of the bag, uh, not really being used. So we'll close that back up. Very nice, strong fabric. Everything feels nice. Uh, in general, the stitching on this bag has been flawless. Uh, you can see materials that uh, needed to be re uh, areas that needed to be reinforced, potential wear points have been reinforced. Uh, there's bar tacking in different areas. It's strong, it's uh, done properly. You can see Maroon uh, really took their attention uh, in uh, creating this bag and making sure all the it's built to rugged uh, military specification. So next is a organizer that's very thoughtfully designed. So it, again, zippers close like this and then clamp those open. You have two pockets over here and they are pretty deep. And some other organizers suffer from too many pockets where you're kind of like, you have tiny little pockets that aren't really usable or a few oversized pockets that don't really lend you much in terms of uh, organization. So these pockets are very tastefully sized, a uh, very functional panel that offers a uh, lot of different options in terms of what uh, gear to store. You have a one pocket over here. Each one of these has a hook, a clip-in that you can again tether or items for all very nicely done. Excellent for uh, things like small items that you don't want to get lost little survival kits, uh, critical mission mission essential items, very thoughtful that they included that. It's also mesh, so you can see the contents of your items once they're inside. Inside over here, you have a big mesh pocket, and then you have in between here, you can store additional stuff as well. So this is super helpful, uh, very roomy, a lot of stuff that uh, can fit in this bag. One thing I would have liked to see is some kind of molly loops over here, uh, some kind of, or a soft loop backing, that way you can Kind of configure uh, pouches uh, for your own mission. Uh, that would, for a bag like this, has so much potential and can do so many things. Uh, it would really further open up the bag and add in a ton of more functionality and make it to be able to flex into many more uh, uh, types of uh, mission roles like medic, radio man, drone operator. Uh, kind of let you uh, put in pouches and stick them in different spots as needed and configure it that way. So going out and actually sternum strap is also uh, at the right spot. Um, also, full accommodation there if needed. Just walking around with it, uh, no pressure points anywhere. Um, easy, you know, nothing sloshing around. Uh, it's got a small profile, uh, not bulky or snagging on stuff. Um, but yeah, I can still carry a lot of items uh, in the backpack. Now let's talk about what I'm able to uh, actually fit in the pack and what my uh, loadout looks like. For my specific purpose of preparing for a full day hike with the potential for an emergency overnight, I'm able to pack the following items which I consider essential. You'll notice uh, through that some items are missing and in a second take, which I will include, uh, you'll see those items are subsequently added. That's because they're either not in stock or they're on their way being shipped at the time of filming. Uh, specifically, the hydration system we'll be using, which will be an exciting review that I'll be sharing with you guys. It's gonna be the Source Tactical uh, Bladder System, one of the best in the world. Uh, can't wait to show you guys that. And that's why you'll notice that at the time of the rest of the pack loadout, it's missing the uh, hydration uh, tube. The other item is, uh, wind shirt, uh, looking for some kind of uh, durable water repellent item to protect from uh, rainfall. And other ancillary items, obviously, I uh, would be carrying uh, more food uh, with me than what you currently see now. Whatever you see now is just some very emergency uh, rudimentary rations. Uh, there is also, uh, it currently weighs around 16 pounds. Uh, there is more room still to put additional items uh, in as needed. Uh, but this is generally a good overview of what I would be uh, carrying. Um, Let's start from the outside. So this pocket would be carrying a uh, the chest pack. Chest pack would have items like a uh, land nav. It would have, uh, it's kind of my knockoff of a Hill People gear pack. Uh, enables me to carry signaling, other tools for quick access. I can carry it as a standard chest rig uh, with the straps that I'm keeping in here. This pocket is used to hold the straps that would uh, kind of bring it into a chest rig. Or I can uh, clip it on with the D-rings at the front like you guys saw in the shoulder straps. Or I could just tuck it into this beaver tail or use this beaver tail for any number of other items. Uh, working away from the sides, so we'll start from the top actually. Over here we've got a headlamp with a charging cable. I also don't have a uh, power, power uh, battery pack right now in here. Uh, it would be charged, so it would be ready to go. It would be stashed in one of these uh, items, obviously something that's not in here currently. So starting from, it's compressed over here. And you guys see there's still a lot more room for the, uh, to use the bottom lashing straps. Uh, there's still a little bit more room, although it's pretty tight at this point uh, for what I would want to fit. 
Again, 16 pounds uh, plus another six pounds uh, of water, uh, maybe another one or two items. Uh, maybe the battery pack would weigh like half a pound. So we're looking at, I would say a total including the hip belt, which is not currently attached. Uh, we're looking at maybe uh, 25 pounds, which is totally doable, uh, not very heavy at all, and still gives me a ton of uh, capability. So uh, going into the uh, side pockets over here, we've got some uh, Ziploc bags, a red tote bag that you can use to carry additional gear, food, signaling, uh, use as a signal panel, and we've got a pair of binoculars. The other side pouch has a pair of gloves. We've got some uh, mosquito netting, which can be used for your shelter. Still room to fit additional water bottles in either uh, pocket. That will give you me another uh, liter in uh, total. Going to the main compartment at the top, we've got just a thing of food, with basic food supplies. Set that off to the side. Got a little survival kit over here. We've got a uh, fire starting, a pair of socks, a metal cup with aluminum foil and bubble wrap. Uh, inside we have water tablets, water purification, uh, additional other, uh, other uh, kind of uh, shelter building items. Uh, we have a rag, we have some uh, heating pads over here. Uh, all these things that would become item, a little, uh, all these things that are super useful, a bottle hanger, um, full kit of uh, pretty much whatever you need to start a fire, get some food going and uh, keep warm. Next thing we have is a uh, shelter. So this has a poncho, uh, has a USGI uh, surplus spec poncho from Orc Industries. Highly recommend you check them out if you want a genuine uh, surplus poncho without having to shop around on eBay for one in good condition. Uh, it's kind of like, a, this is part of the Afghanistan uh, contract that Orc Industries had. They're like, kind of like the sole supplier of ponchos to the military. Um, this is remaining surplus items from the contract now offered to uh, citizens on their website. Kind of pricey with uh, shipping, but a very high quality and durable uh, poncho if you need it. Um, and then we have a just a regular compact contractor uh, trash bag. Both of them can be used uh, to rig into kind of an emergency shelter, um, any number of other uh, shelters, a lot of information out there. Uh, but those two items are multi-purpose. Uh, you can use it as a rain poncho, a shelter, tarp, sleeping, kind of sleeping bag, uh, whatever else you need. Uh, full first aid kit with everything else that I need. Uh, this is really full, uh, has everything I would want, including kind of wilderness medicine, uh, tactical medicine, basic boo-boo stuff, meds, whatever. Over here, nothing much. We just have a marker with uh, duct tape. Uh, we'll probably carry more duct tape though. Uh, Moroccan field knife with just white tape, that way I can easily spot it if it's dropped. Inside here, also very basic, just some um, mosquito spray. I uh, would we'll probably carry also some something like poison ivy, some uh, body powder, uh, maybe additional socks, other stuff that you need to keep your feet going, keep the insects off of you, uh, and maybe some sunscreen as well, keep the sun off of you. Here we have just two uh, basic, uh, you could use it as a survival wrap, signaling panel, uh, survival blanket, anti-thermal. Um, we have some cordage over here. It can be used just for shelter building, uh, fishing, um, what else, building a little bit of a perimeter defense. Um, any number of uses for cordage, repair, hanging items uh, from the branches, that way bears can't get to them, whatever it is. And that pretty much takes care of everything in the bag. Again, not carrying a ton of stuff. We would have hydration running through here. Uh, we're not doing comms, but if we were, we could have held the radio here and uh, run comms through here as well. Um, and then I could stuff a wind shirt somewhere in here, additional clothing layers, lash them to the bottom. Um, battery pack can be stored in any kind of any one of these items. Uh, hygiene, more uh, hy additional hygiene items like a floss, toothbrush, whatever else are already carried um, in the little survival bag that I showed you guys. Uh, but there's the ability to carry uh, much more of it uh, in other pockets.